Ans Jaber, born August 28, 1994, is a Tunisian professional tennis player. She has a career high ranking by the Women's Tennis Association, WTA, of world number no. two, achieved on June 27, 2022. Jaber is the current Tunisian number no. one and the highest ranked African and Arab tennis player in WTA and ATP rankings history. She has won five singles titles on the WTA Tour, as well as 11 singles titles and one doubles title on the ITF circuit. Jabber was the runner-up at Wimbledon in 2022 and 2023 and at the U.S. Open in 2022, becoming the first African and Arab woman to contest a major singles final. Jabber was first exposed to tennis by her mother at three years old. She became pro in her teen years when she reached two junior major girls singles finals at the French Open in 2010 and 2011, winning the latter and becoming the first African or Arab to win a junior major since 1964. After nearly a decade of playing primarily at the ITF level, she started competing more regularly on the WTA Tour in 2017. She won the Arab Woman of the Year Award in 2019. At the 2020 Australian Open, Jabir became the first Arab woman to reach a major quarterfinal, a feat she repeated at the 2021 Wimbledon Championships. She also became the first Arab woman to win a WTA Tour title at the 2021 Birmingham Classic. Jabir won the 2022 Madrid Open, a WTA 1000 event, her biggest title, becoming the first female Tunisian and Arab player to win at this level. Her achievements are credited with raising the profile of tennis across the African continent. Early life Ans Jabir was born to Samira and Ritha Jabir in Ksar Helal, a small town in Tunisia. She grew up in the larger nearby coastal town of Sousse. Jabir has two older brothers, Hatem and Marwan, and an older sister, Yasmin. Her mother played tennis recreationally and introduced her to the sport at the age of three. Jabir trained under coach Nabil Nlaika for 10 years from ages 4 to 13, originally starting to work with him at a tennis promotion center at her school. When she was 10 years old, her club did not have its own tennis courts and she could only train on courts at nearby hotels. At 12 years old, Jabir moved to the capital city of Tunis to train at the Lycée Sportif El Menza, a national sport high school for the country's up-and-coming athletes, where she stayed for several years. She also later trained in Belgium and France starting at the age of 16. Jabir credits her parents for the sacrifices they made while raising her, saying, My parents sacrificed a lot of things, my mom used to drive me everywhere around Tunisia to go play the tournaments, and she encouraged me to go to a special school to study. That was a big sacrifice to see her little girl going for a dream that, honestly, wasn't 100% guaranteed. She believed in me and gave me the confidence to be there. Junior career Jabir began playing on the ITF junior circuit in August 2007 on the week of her 13th birthday. With compatriot Nur Abbas, she won the doubles event of her debut tournament, the Grade 5 Al Fata ITF junior tournament in Lebanon. She defeated Abbas to win her first Grade 5 singles event at the 2009 Fujairah ITF Junior Tennis Championships in the United Arab Emirates, where she also won the doubles event with Abbas. Later in the year, she started to have more success at higher-level tournaments, finishing runner-up at the Grade 2 International Junior Championships of Morocco and winning the Grade 2 Smash International Junior Championships in Egypt, both in singles. She made her Junior Grand Slam debut at the 2009 U.S. Open, losing her opening match to Laura Robson. Jabber started to produce strong results at the Junior Grand Slam and other Grade A events in May 2010. In the doubles event at the Trofeo Bonfiglio, she partnered with Charlene Seaton to reach the semifinals. Two weeks later, she played the 2010 French Open and upset third seed Irina Kromakiva in the semifinals before finishing runner up to Alina Svitolina. She also performed well at Wimbledon, reaching the quarterfinals in singles and the semifinal in doubles. She lost to Yulia Putintseva in singles and Kromakiva and Svitolina in doubles alongside Monica Puig. Putintseva defeated Jabir again at the U.S. Open. Jabir entered the doubles event with Putintseva and lost in the quarterfinals to Kromakiva again, who had partnered with Daria Gavrilova. 
Following the U.S. Open, Scheper had left wrist surgery in November that kept her out for five months until April 2011. The last two singles events of Jabber's junior career were the 2011 French Open and the 2011 Wimbledon Championships. At the French Open, she won her only Junior Grand Slam title to become the first North African woman to win a Junior Grand Slam tournament. As the ninth seed, she upset top seed Daria Gavrilova in the quarterfinals, third seed Caroline Garcia in the semifinals, and then fifth seed Monica Puig in the final. This title helped her rise to number four in the world in the junior rankings. She also became the first Arab girl to win a junior Grand Slam singles title in history, and the first junior in general since Ismail El Shafi won the Wimbledon boys title in 1964. Jabir also entered the doubles event at the Grade 1 Junior. International Roehampton, which she won while partnering with Ashley Barty. Professional career 2008-12 WTA Tour debut Jabber began playing on the ITF women's circuit in 2008 at the age of 14. In October 2009, she finished runner-up in both singles and doubles at a $10,000 tournament in Monaster near her hometown, losing to Elise Tamila in both events. She won her first title at the $10,000 level in singles in May 2010 in Antalya, Turkey. She then won the singles and doubles events at another $10,000 tournament in Casablanca, Morocco two months later. After having left wrist surgery at the end of the year and winning a junior Grand Slam title, Sheber moved up to the $25,000 and $50,000 levels in the summer of 2011. She made her WTA Tour main draw debut at the age of 17 as a wildcard at the Premier 5 Qatar Ladies Open in February 2012 where she lost her first career match to number 103 Virginie Rosano in three sets. She was also given a wild card into the qualifying competition at the Dubai Tennis Championships the following week. Although she did not qualify, she upset world number 33 Xinjia with a ranking of number 1169. Sheber did not have much success at the ITF circuit in 2012, only reaching one final, which came in singles and was her first at the $25,000 level. She also entered qualifying at the French Open, but only won one match. Jabber finished the year ranked number 260 in the world. 2013-16, top 200 at the ITF circuit level Jabber in 2015 after a slow start to 2013, Jabber won her first $25,000 title in April 2013 in Tunis. She then won back-to-back -back $50,000 titles over in Sophie Mestak in Japan in May to bring her into the top 200 for the first time. In July, Jabber played in her second WTA tournament main draw at the Baku Cup. She upset top seed, defending champion, and world number 37, Bojana Jovanovski, in the second round before losing in the quarterfinals to Magda Lynette. She entered the qualifying competitions at Wimbledon and the U.S. Open, losing her opening match in both events. A third $50,000 title at the Saguenay Challenger with a win in the final over Coco Vandeweghe took her to a new career high of 139. In 2014, she played the main draw in the Malaysian Open losing to Julia Gato Montecone in the first round. Sheber stayed inside the top 200 for most of the next three years, but could not enter the top 100, reaching a career-best ranking of 118 in 2015. She continued to play a mix of ITF and WTA events but played primarily at the ITF level. Her only ITF title in 2014 came at a $25,000 event in Tunis, and she did not win any titles in 2015. She finished runner-up twice in 2014, with the higher-level result coming at the $50,000 Open Nantes Atlantique, losing to Katerina Siniakova. After losing in qualifying at the French Open and Wimbledon, Jabber qualified for two major main draws in a row at the 2014 US Open and the 2015 Australian Open. She lost her opening matches at both tournaments to No. 19 Andrea Petkovic and Vera Zvonareva, respectively. With no titles, finals, or semifinals in 2015, her year-end ranking dropped to No. 210. Jeber rebounded with two $25,000 titles in January 2016. A $50,000 title at the Nana Trophy in Tunis helped her return to the top 200 for all but one week through the rest of the season.
Nonetheless, she lost in qualifying at both Wimbledon and the U.S. Open and did not have a strong second half of the season. She finished the year at number 193. 2017-18, first WTA Tour Final, Top 100 Jabber at Wimbledon qualifying in 2017 Jabber participated in all four Grand Slam singles events in 2017 for the first time. After losing in the last round of qualifying at the Australian Open, she reached the French Open main draw as a lucky loser, the Wimbledon main draw as a qualifier, and the US Open main draw as a direct acceptance. She began to rise back up the rankings at the Premier Level Dubai Tennis Championships, where she qualified for the main draw and upset world number 22, Anastasia Pavlyuchenkova. In the first round, this result brought her from number 171 to number 137. After moderate success at the $60,000 level, Chabert's next big breakthrough came at the French Open. As a lucky loser, she won two main draw matches, including an upset of world number 7, Dominika Sabolkova, in the second round for her first top 10 victory. She lost in the third round to Tamiya Baczynski. At the end of July, she made her top 100 debut, her only other Grand Slam main draw match win of the year was a first-round win over American wildcard Brienne Miner at the U.S. Open, which cemented her place in the top 100 for the rest of the year. Sheber fell out of the top 100 in February 2018. She did not win her first match of the year until she reached the quarterfinals at the $60,000 Space Coast Pro Classic in April. After she lost in qualifying at the French Open, she dropped down to number 180 in the world. Sheber regained some of her ranking points when she won her first $100,000 title at the Manchester Trophy, bringing her back to number 133. With this title, she also earned a wild card into the main draw at Wimbledon. She won her only Grand Slam main draw match of the year at Wimbledon over Victorija Golubic, who she defeated for the third time in the span of a month. Sheber ended her season with the best result of her career to date. As a qualifier at the Premier Level Kremlin Cup, she finished runner-up to world number 14, Daria Kasakina. She defeated three top 25 players in the tournament, including number 8 Sloane Stevens and number 11 Anastasia Sevastova. With this result, she returned to the top 100 at a career high of number 62 in the World 2019. U.S. Open third round Jabber at the 2019 French Open Jabber played all four Grand Slam main draws for the first time in 2019 and stayed in the top 100 the entire year. She lost in the first round at the first three Grand Slam tournaments of the season and did not win multiple main draw matches at any tournaments until after the French Open in May. Jabber had a better second half of the season. She reached the semi-finals at the Premier Level Eastbourne International, where she upset home favorite and world number 19, Johanna Conta. She withdrew before the semi-final due to a right ankle injury. Chabert's next big result came at the U.S. Open. She defeated number 27 Caroline Garcia and then Alexandra Sasnovich to reach the third round at a Grand Slam tournament for the second time in her career. She lost a tight three-set match to world number three, Karolina Pliskova, in the third round. With this success, she reached a career-high ranking of number 51. The only other tournament of the year where Jabber won multiple main draw matches was the Tianjin Open in October. She defeated three players including number 36 Yulia Putinseva, before losing to Rebecca Peterson in her second semifinal of the year. 2020, a major quarterfinal, Top 50 Jabber had a major breakthrough at the Australian Open. After defeating Johanna Conta and Caroline Garcia in the first two rounds, she beat Caroline Wozniacki in three sets in the last match of Wozniacki's career. Jabber defeated a fourth top 50 player in succession in Wang Chang before losing to eventual champion Sophia Kennan in the quarterfinals. With this result, she made her top 50 debut and also became the first Arab woman to reach a Grand Slam quarterfinal. The following month, Jabber continued her progress after receiving two wild cards to both premier tournaments in the Middle East. She held a match point against number two, Simona Halep, in a second round loss at Dubai. She then reached the quarterfinals at the Qatar Ladies Open, where she upset world number three, Karolina Pliskova, in the third round. After the COVID 19 season suspension, Jabber continued her good form at a Grand Slam level by reaching the third round of the U.S. Open and the fourth round of the French Open for the first time in her career. 
She finished the year as world number 31, her highest year-end ranking thus far. 2021, first title, major quarterfinal and top 10 Jabur reached the semifinal of the Charleston Open and the final of the WTA 250M USC Health Open, also in Charleston, the latter of which she lost to Australian Astra Sharma. She reached a career-high ranking of world number 24 on May 10, 2021. Seated 25th at the French Open, she took her revenge by defeating Sharma in the second round to advance to the third round of a major for a sixth straight time. She defeated Magda Lynette to reach the fourth round for a second time in this major where she lost to 24th seed Coco Gauff, seated second. Jabur reached her third final in her career and made history as the first Arab woman to win a WTA Tour title at the Birmingham Classic by defeating Daria Kasakina at the same tournament. Partnering with Australian Ellen Perez, Jabur also reached her first doubles final, losing to Marie Buzkova and Lucy Radetska. At Wimbledon, Jabur, seeded 21st, defeated five-time champion Venus Williams to become the first Tunisian tennis player, first Arab woman, and the first woman representing an African country since Cara Black from Zimbabwe in 2005 to reach the third round, or quarterfinals, at Wimbledon. This also marked her seventh consecutive third-round appearance at a major. She continued her run when, despite vomiting at the side of the court when at match point, she defeated former Wimbledon champion and 11th seed, Garbina Muguruza, to reach the fourth round, coming back from a set down to reach the second week in round of 16 for the first time. The day before, Tunisian supporters who flocked to Wimbledon burst into song the national soccer team song because there isn't one for tennis and shouted her name after her fourth-round victory over 2020 French Open champion IGA Swiatek. She defeated seventh seed IGA Swiatek, making another comeback from the first set down to reach the quarterfinals, where she lost to second seed and also first-time quarterfinalist Irina Sabalenka. As a result, she reached a career-high ranking of world number 22 on 26 July 2021. To begin the U.S. Open series, Jabur played the Canadian Open seeded 13th, beating Clara Burel, Daria Kasakina, and defending champion Bianca Andrescu before losing in the quarterfinals to Jessica Pagula in three sets. With this result, she made her top 20 debut the week of August 16, 2021. At Indian Wells, Jabur reached her first WTA 1000 semifinal by defeating Annette Contevet in the quarterfinals. With the win, she propelled herself into a career-high ranking, becoming the first Arab tennis player to reach the top 10 in either ATP or WTA rankings history, after the withdrawal of Emma Raducanu from the Ahibition Event World Tennis Championship, Jabur was given her place. She won the tournament, defeating Belinda Bensik in the final. 2022, two major finals and world number two Jabur started her season at the Sydney International. She defeated Astra Sharma in the first round and Petra Kivitova in the second round before losing to Annette Contevet in the quarterfinals. She subsequently withdrew from the Australian Open due to a back injury sustained in the Sydney tournament. In February, Jabur played the Dubai Championships, where she defeated former world number no. two, Veras Vonareva and Jessica Pagula, before falling to former number no. one, Simona Halep, in the quarterfinals. She then entered the Qatar Ladies Open. After a first round bye, she defeated Aleksandra Sasnovic and Teresa Martinkova before falling to Kondavat again in the quarterfinals. At the Indian Wells Open, Jabur received a bye into the second round where she was upset by Daria Seville in three sets. She reached the fourth round at the Miami Open, falling to 2022 Australian Open finalist Danielle Collins in straight sets. Jabur reached her first final of the year at the Charleston Open, where she fell to Belinda Bensick in three sets. In Stuttgart, she was defeated by Paula Bedosa in the quarterfinals. Seated eighth at the Madrid Open, the world number 10 reached her first WTA 1000 final, besting Belinda Bensick and Simona Halep, before defeating Ekaterina Alexandrova in the semifinals to become the first Arab player to reach a final at this level. She defeated Jessica Pagula in the final to become the first African player to win a WTA 1000 title, the ninth different winner at the Madrid Open and the 38th different winner in a WTA 1000 tournament since 2009. 
At the Italian Open, she reached her second consecutive WTA 1000 final, defeating Serena Sursti, Adela Toljanovic, Yulia Putinseva, and fourth seed Maria Sakkari, before saving a match point in the semifinals against Daria Kasatkina for her 11th straight win. In the final, she lost to IGA Swiatek in straight sets, by reaching the final at the Italian Open. Sheber set a career high ranking of world number no. 6 on May 16, 2022. After having an excellent clay court season, she then participated in the French Open, where she drew Magda Lynette in the first round. She was shockingly defeated by Lynette after having a set and a break lead in the second set. Despite this, she reached a career high ranking of world number no. 4 on June 6, 2022, following the conclusion of the tournament. Ons Schaber receives the 2022 Wimbledon Championships finalist shield from Kate Middleton, then the Duchess of Cambridge. As the top seed, she won the German Open in Berlin after Belinda Bensick retired in the second set of the final. As a result, she moved to a new career-high ranking of world number no. 3 on June 20, 2022. Schaber initially entered the Eastbourne International Singles draw seeded second, but withdrew before the tournament. Schaber remained in the doubles draw as a wild card, in which she partnered with Serena Williams, who was playing her first tournament since 2021 Wimbledon. Schaber and Williams won their first round match against Marie Buzkova and Sarah Sorabi's Tormo to set up a quarter final against Shiko Aoyama and Chan Hao Ching. They then reached the semi finals, but Schaber withdrew before. Their match with Magda Lynette and Alexandra Krinik citing a right knee injury, she achieved a new career high in the singles rankings of world number no. 2 on June 27, 2022, which was the highest ranking for any African and Arab tennis player in WTA and ATP rankings history. In London, she reached her second consecutive Wimbledon quarterfinal, defeating Mirjam Bjorklund, Qatar Jinakawa, Diane Perry and 24th seed Elise Mertens. Defeating Marie Buzkova in the quarterfinal, she became the first Arab or North African woman ever to reach the semifinals of a major tournament. After that, she defeated Tatyana Maria to reach her maiden Grand Slam final, which made her the first African woman and the first Arab or North African player in the Open era to enter a Grand Slam singles final. In the final, she lost to Elena Rybakina in three sets. Despite this, Wimbledon did not receive points due to athletes representing Russia and Belarus being banned from the tournament because of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Leading up to the U.S. Open during the North American summer, Sheber lost in the second round at the Silicon Valley Classic and retired in her first round match against Xing Qingwen at the Canadian Open. At the Cincinnati Open, Sheber lost in the second round to Petra Kivitova in three sets. At the U.S. Open, she regained her form, advancing to the quarterfinals for the first time at this major defeating 31st seed Shelby Rogers and then 18th seed Veronika Kudermatova in straight sets to record her first victory over the Russian in four meetings. She became the third African woman to make it into the quarterfinals of the U.S. Open in the Open era, and the first from the northern part of the continent. The other African women to reach the U.S. Open quarterfinals are Marina Godwin, 1968, and Amanda Kutzer, 1994, 1996, and 1998, both from South Africa. However, although she eventually managed to reach the final, making her the first African woman and the first Arab woman to do so, comma, she lost against IGA Swiatek in straight sets. Unlike Wimbledon, Jabir received 1,300 points in the tournament. Shaber recorded her first win at a WTA Tour event in Africa against Enli at the inaugural edition of the WTA 250 Tennis Tournament in Tunisia, which she helped start in her home country. She was eventually defeated by Claire Liu in the quarterfinals. Shaber made her debut at the WTA Finals in Fort Worth. She defeated Jessica Pagula in her second match of the group stage in three sets. However, she finished her campaign in the round-robin stage as she lost two out of her three matches against Irena Sabalenka and Maria Sakkari, respectively. She ended the best season of her career ranked number two in the WTA rankings. 2023 Two WTA Tour titles, second Wimbledon final she started the year with two victories against Serena Sursti and the qualified Ukrainian Marta Kostuk in Adelaide International 1. 
she was defeated in the semifinals by the young qualified Linda Nuskova, 18 years old and 102nd in the world in three sets. In mid-January, she competed in the Australian Open and, after getting rid of the Slovenian Tamara Zidensek in three sets, she came up against Marketa Vondrasova. After an absence for a right knee injury which was treated by surgery, she returned to the circuit in March at Indian Wells, but lost in the third round against Vondrasova, after beating Magdalena Freck. She fell in the first round of Miami the following week, beaten by Russian qualifier Vervara Grichiva. Jabber at Wimbledon, 2023 in April, she won the Charleston Open by beating in the final Belinda Bensick, who had beaten her in the final the year before. Seeded number two, she eliminated before the final without losing a single set the Ukrainian Lesia Serenko, the guest Caroline Dolhide and the Russians Anna Kalinskaya and Daria Kasakina, eighth player in the world. She took part in the Stuttgart tournament two weeks later and took out former Roland Garros winner Yelena Ostapenko and Beatrice Haddad Maya but had to retire in the semifinal against number one IGA Swiatek after three games due to a left calf injury. This injury also forced her to give up defending her title at the Madrid Open. She returned to the Italian Open but lost in the first match against former world number two, Paula Bedosa. At Roland Garros, she eliminated the Italian Lucia Bronzetti, the local Océan Dodan, the last French woman in the running, and Olga Danilovic, both out of the top 100 to join as in 2020 and 2021 the round of 16 Port Dautoul. She finds the American Bernarda Pera, a novice at this stage. She dismisses him and goes to the quarterfinals for the first time in her career in the tournament. Against Haddad Maya, the match was more complicated and she was overthrown after a long duel. As defending champion in Berlin, she lost in the first round against the German qualifier Jule Niemeyer, and in the second round in Eastbourne, she was beaten by Camilla Georgi. At Wimbledon, Jabber managed to eliminate four Grand Slam winners in her way to the final including Bianca Andrescu in the third round, Petra Kivitova in the fourth round, defending champion Elena Rybakina in the quarterfinals, and world number two, Arena Sabalenka, in the semifinals. However, she lost in straight sets to world number 42, Marketa Vondrasova in the final, which she described as the most painful loss in her career. She won her fifth title defeating Diana Schneider at the 2023 Ningbo Open, 2024 at the Australian Open, Sheber lost in the second round for a second consecutive year to the 16-year-old Russian phenomenon Mira Andreeva who was making her tournament debut and ranked number 47 at the time. This was also Andreeva's first top 10 win in her career. National representation Fed Cup Shaber represented Tunisia at the Junior Fed Cup in 2009 alongside Nura Bays and Sonia Dagu. The team finished third place in their round robin group that also included Mexico, China, and Germany. Although Shaber lost all three of her singles rubbers, Tunisia won their tie against Mexico after Abays won her singles match and Shaber teamed up with Abays to win the decisive doubles rubber. Tunisia finished in 11th place out of 16 teams overall, losing their first 9th to 12th place tie to Indonesia, but winning their second 9th to 12th place tie against Australia. Jabur and Abays won both singles rubbers in that last tie. Jabur made her senior Fed Cup debut for Tunisia in 2011, representing the team from 2011 to 2013, and again from 2016 through 2019. She has played in 29 ties, compiling an overall record of 32 to 11 split between 24 to 5 in singles and 8 to 6 in doubles. Her 24 singles wins are tied with Selma Sfar for the most in Tunisia Fed Cup history. When Jabber debuted for Tunisia, they were in Europe slash Africa Zone Group 3. They were promoted to Zone Group 2 for 2013 after winning all five of their round robin ties and a playoff tie against Ireland in 2012. They were again promoted to Zone Group I for 2014 the following year, winning a playoff tie over Lithuania. However, Tunisia ultimately did not participate in the Fed Cup in 2014 or 2015, which was concurrent with Tunisia's one-year ban from Davis Cup that resulted from their federation requiring Malik Jaziri to default a match to an Israeli player. When Tunisia returned to Fed Cup in 2016, they were again placed in Zone Group Three. 
they did not manage to win their round-robin groups in 2016 or 2017, losing ties to Greece and Luxembourg in 2016 and then Finland and Malta in 2017. Tunisia again won their round-robin group again in 2018, after which they defeated Lithuania to win promotion to Zone Group 2 in 2019. They did not win their round-robin group in 2019, keeping them in Zone Group 2 for 2020. Jabir won all of her singles rubbers when the team was promoted in 2012, 2013, and 2018. Olympics as a junior, Jabir also represented Tunisia at the 2010 Youth Olympics in Singapore, winning two singles matches and one doubles match, the latter with Romanian Cristina Dinu. She was eliminated in the quarterfinals by Chinese player Jing Sai Sai in both competitions. Jabir also represented Tunisia in singles at the London Olympics in 2012, the Rio de Janeiro Olympic Games in 2016, and the Tokyo Olympic Games in 2021. She lost her 2012 opening round match to Sabine Lasicki in three sets. She also lost her 2016 opening round match in three sets, this time to Daria Kasakina. She had a chance to serve for the match in the second set against Kasakina, but was broken, in Tokyo, she faced Carla Suarez Navarro in the first round of the singles tournament, but lost in straight sets. Playing style Jabir builds her style of play around variety and hitting what she refers to as crazy shots. She tries to employ difficult shots because that is how she enjoys playing tennis. She likes to utilize slice and drop shots in particular. Jabir can hit winners in a variety of ways, including backhand drop shots from the baseline or forehands up the line. She likes to play on any surface. Coaches Jabir's backhand slice as a junior, Jabir was coached by Nabil Nlaika until she was 13 years old. Jabir began working with Bertrand Perret in February 2018. She viewed Perret as being more supportive of her style of play than her past coaches, saying, I think he understands my game. He tries to improve my good shots, not change what I do. I've worked with a lot of coaches who tried to change my game. Bertrand encourages me to do drop shots and also corrects my drop shots, instead of other coaches who told me not to do drop shots at all. In early 2020, Jabir switched coaches to Isam Jalali, a former Tunisian Davis Cup player with whom she had already been working for about three years. Personal Life Jabir photo on the cover of Tunavision's magazine, issue 103, July 2011, praising her victory in the 2011 French Open for girls Jabir is a Muslim. She occasionally has to postpone certain practices due to Ramadan during tournaments. She is married to Karim Kamoun, a Russian-Tunisian, citation needed, former fencer who has been her fitness coach since mid-2017. Jabir was one of 12 players who received an International Player Grand Slam grant from the Grand Slam Development Fund in 2017 immediately before the French Open, where she won her first two career Grand Slam main draw matches. She became endorsed by Qatar Airways in 2020. Jabir won the 2019 Arab Woman of the Year Award in the sport category. Having reached the third round of the U.S. Open and established herself as a permanent fixture in the top 100 that year, Jabir is close friends. With fellow tennis player Tatiana Maria, whom she defeated in the semifinals of the 2022 Wimbledon Championships, describing her as her barbecue buddy. Television and film Jabir appears in the tennis docuseries Breakpoint, which premiered on Netflix on January 13, 2023. Sponsorship In June 2015, Ans Jabir signed a partnership contract with Qatar National Bank Tunisia. In 2018, she became ambassador of Havel belonging to the automotive manufacturer Great Wall Motor through Atlas Auto, its distributor in Tunisia, then sponsored in the same year the Juicer Group chaired by businessman Motz Driss. In December 2020, she became sponsored by the Tunisian telecommunications operator Tunisie Telecom. In February 2022, she signed a sponsorship contract with Talon, an innovation consulting firm. She has signed with Evolve, a sports management agency founded by four-time Grand Slam champion Naomi Osaka. Sports ownership On August 25, 2023, Jabir purchased a minority stake in National Women's Soccer League Club North Carolina Courage, becoming the second professional tennis player to do so after Naomi Osaka.